Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another installment of Husker Hot Takes, a weekly daily Nebraskan production in which myself, senior sports editor, and football beat reporter Landon Wirt speaks with another member of the Daily Nebraskan about Husker football. And this is going to be one of, if not the, last episodes of the Nebraska football season with the last game on Friday upcoming. And what better guest to have on than someone that's someone that's probably the most qualified outside of the sports section to talk about Nebraska football, <sighs> given that he's covered pretty much every game um, with us this year, including trips to Minneapolis and Norman when we made both of those yep. um, adventures. We're saving the best for last. Joining me is Daily Nebraskan senior multimedia editor and Husker Hot Takes producer, Zeke Williams. Zeke, finally, you're yeah, here. You're it, on in front of the camera after months of doing this. From the production standpoint, we're here. How, how does this feel? It's uh, it's fun. I, you know, at the start of this, I didn't really think I'd be the one on. But as we went through, I was like, ah, you know what? I'll, I'll be the guy for the Iowa episode because, or do we have stuff to talk about today? Yeah, we do. Um, the hits just keep coming. Just when you think that there's a little bit of a lull in activity for Nebraska, yep. things happen. So... On Monday, Scott Frost buries the lead a little bit. Um, it was it was odd to see Adrian Martinez not speak at Monday's press conference. When I had heard that, I, I rose a bit suspicious. And then Frost, about three minutes into his weekly Monday media availability, shares that Adrian Martinez is out for the remainder of the season, will not be playing against Iowa due to a shoulder injury. He suffered... Um, against Wisconsin last week. So I guess, you know, what what, what are your thoughts on that, I, I guess? And then the, the part two of that question is, what are you expecting to see from <laughs> Logan Smothers, who oh. is an ultimate wild card at this point with limited experience um, at Nebraska and, of course, no collegiate starts? Uh, you know, to begin with, you know, Martinez has had a season. It's been a season for him, to say the least. What, it was Michigan State where he apparently broke his jaw and we didn't find out till like, a month and a half later, um, and now this, it's its a miracle he's been playing this well, or at all, I guess one should say, um, especially after Broken Jaw. I can't imagine how interesting that must be to deal with. Um, it's a little disappointing to see Adrian not finish out the season. I'll, I'll say that. I, you know, I, I'll be honest. I haven't been the biggest proponent of the, I guess one would say, Frost Martinez agenda. Um, but it is disappointing. You know, he's been one of the, I guess you should say, the star of the offense, for better or worse, um, whether or not it was his good or bad days. Uh, past that, it's Mother's Time, baby. I, you know... I don't think I, I'll be honest, I was out of town this weekend, so I didn't get to watch the Wisconsin game. Um, but I heard Smothers got some play because of Martinez being out. The last time I remember seeing him play was uh, Fordham. <laughs> so Jogging your memory all the way back to September. Okay, Always a fun yeah. exercise for college um, students. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, it'll it'll be interesting. I I feel like he'll be able to play to a degree, but especially not having had a lot of a lot of like collegiate play i don't like is this his second season here yes yeah, second season first start smothers yeah. has appeared in five games uh so far this season and none of them very significant action he did play against wisconsin he closed out the first half and basically ran a quarterback draw twice and then the half ended so um, he's going to get his shot. We'll see what happens. Iowa is a very opportunistic defense in the mm -hmm. sense that they force a lot of interceptions, 21 picks. Um, so it will be very interesting to see how Smothers responds when he's thrown into that mix. It'll be interesting to see what sort of game plan Nebraska adapts as we record this on Tuesday. We'll probably find out a little bit more when Frost speaks Wednesday on how he's going to use Logan Smothers. Are we going to see more run? Are we going to mm -hmm. see more pass? We, we don't know. So, Iowa. Last game of the regular oh, season for the first Iowa. time in Frost's tenure. Um, there isn't really any question marks of will Nebraska be playing beyond its last game of the regular season. In 2018 and 2019, there were fleeting bowl game hopes that were crushed by the Hawkeyes. And then in 2020, after Nebraska just dismantled Rutgers and Pis Piscataway, there were questions of, well, will Nebraska go accept a bowl game invitation because there were there were available options for them. Uh, so with no strings attached from the Nebraska perspective, you're kind of just playing for pride in the fans at this point. So how important is a positive result on Friday? I, you know, 
speaking as a Nebraska native, I think it is important. This, uh, like, the Iowa-Nebraska rivalry has been, like, the biggest thing since I've paid attention to sports, um, which, granted, that was probably about a decade ago now. So, you know, it it's important. I think they at least need to show up, especially the offense without Martinez. It'll be interesting to see how they play without, you know, the starting quarterback. Um, I'm sure, like, people like Austin Allen will do the best they can to help, but I... It'll be interesting, to say the least. Uh, yeah. Can't really say much else. I just think that they, if they don't show up, then people are going to be disappointed. Yeah, it's, it's always nice to beat Iowa. Always important to beat Iowa, for sure. Friday is also important outside of the context of the white lines in the sense that it, it's going to kick off an offseason of real change, uh, at least to the oh, coaching yeah. staff, maybe to, to, to more um, you know, aside from that. So how important uh, will Friday be in terms of getting things started away from the actual game action? You know, I, I, think, I think it's important that they do, you know, play strong in that game to at least give opportunistic coaches a chance to be like, wow, okay, maybe I will have a decent team going in instead of, I think, as you were mentioning the other week, it's like, uh, you know, I might only have a year here, that sort of, like, uncertainty with it. So it's important that Frost and any interim coaches do do their best to make it look like a team that's actually worth coming to. And last, lastly on, on the Iowa-Nebraska front, score predictions for... Um, for this one, I oh. I will I will let you go and save mine for editor score predictions on <laughs> Wednesday because to be truthfully honest with you, I have no clue how this is gonna go. Yeah, I'm I I don't know what Nebraska opened as seven point favorites, four and a half. Four, uh, yeah, it dropped down to four and a half, and now we're underdogs by five. Last I checked, I think. Yeah, some it's Nebraska's an underdog. I can I yeah. can work on a current line for you as as you ramble here. So I you know. I have hope. I, I have a degree of hope Nebraska will swing out some sort of win, maybe. I think I think regardless, it's going to be a one-score game because the defense has still proven to be decent enough to put up, to, like, to go up against some of the best, especially, like, last week without Doman. Um, I, I would say that there's a solid chance it's within seven points. Yeah. I, I tend to agree. I think... No matter who comes out with it, I think it's going to be a field goal game on either side, just like yeah. um, these are, are bound to go. I'm going to close with something a little different, a little fun. Uh, since it is Senior Day Friday, I am a senior that will not be returning to the Daily Nebraska more than likely next semester. Um, but at any rate, I thought it would be fun to reflect on the past couple of years. Power rankings time. Oh, boy. Uh, three favorites. Um, games that you have covered um, as a Nebraska reporter. I will go first and give you yes. some time to think um, because I have three written out and I will expand on them a little bit. So in no particular order here, I have the 2020 Penn State home game. Uh, it's It was a little rough to include one from the no fan season just because, I mean, the atmosphere was so dead. But it was still a really fun game. Nebraska really asserted its dominance over a Penn State team that had serious aspirations before the year. And then Penn State came back on the, on the wings of its talent, which was cool to see. Um, and then the ending was very, very dramatic. It came down to, to a fourth down stop. Uh, and to see Nebraska celebrate like that, it, w- it was pretty cool. It was their first win of the season, I, I believe. So mm-hmm. that was pretty fun uh, to see. It was my first win while, while covering the Husker football beat. So that was neat um, for sure. The second game I would rate on here is 2021 Oklahoma. Um, just the atmosphere was incredible. That stadium that Oklahoma plays in is incredibly nice. Oh, yes. Yeah, so um, it's it's a, it's a little stadium. bit of a throwback in terms of, of press box amenities, but it's a nice grass field. <laughs> The, the atmosphere was just loud and electric and fun, and the game was really good, too, which is a running theme of these three is that the game's always very, very mm-hmm. compelling. Uh, compelling for different reasons, because Nebraska didn't win and weird things happened along the way. But oh, compel- for sure. Compelling nonetheless. Um, and just that overall experience was cool. I really like Norma. I liked OU's campus. Definitely my favorite away game, which is why I put it on my list. And then the third one on there is 2021 Michigan. Um, the home game. 
Uh, it was the second game uh, of the two that served in the uh, the, 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 the primetime night games. Uh, so that mm-hmm. was cool. Memorial Stadium at night is a different breed. It's electric. Uh, that light show yes, was sure. awesome. And l- like the other three, the game was really, really good. It was back and forth all the way down to the wire until the fourth quarter. Nebraska couldn't pull it out, but it was still really, really entertaining. Um, so that's my three. I gave two honorable mentions here to Minnesota and Purdue. Minnesota on the road 2021, Purdue 2020. Both great road environments, great venues, super nice stadium. Uh, I would have loved to see Ross Aid with fans, um, but seeing TCF Bank with fans was pretty cool. So yeah. that's my list, my top three again. 2020 Penn State, 2021 Oklahoma, and 2021 Michigan. Got Four it. stars, Zeke. If I, th- if I have to choose three, I think my first one would probably be the first game I ever covered, which was 2019 Indiana, the black shirt game. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that, that's I don't, a throwback. I cannot remember a lot of the specifics about that game, mainly because I had a friend who was working for Big Ten Network at the time who got absolutely trucked by an Indiana player. Ah. Uh, good old Brenda. Yeah. Um, so that's, that yeah, I would say that's probably sad. one of my... Th- top three just because it's the first Husker game I ever covered as a DN photographer. So that was definitely fun. Um, Fortunately, I didn't cover any 2020 games just because they were very limited with how many photographers we could send. And we had some other people who wanted to get more experience and some upperclassmen who deserved to be able to shoot a few more games before they graduated. Um, But then this year, I have to agree with you, Oklahoma was a great game to cover. Um, even if we didn't win, I it was an amazing game on both sides of the ball for Nebraska, I would say. The fact that they were able to keep Oklahoma to however many points. Better I think that was one of the Yeah. Cool. Um, so, yeah, Oklahoma was definitely probably one of the better games to cover. Um, then, oh, I would say Northwestern this year as well, just because yeah. that I was like one that. of the few, uh, comfortable. few comfortable wins, I think, Maybe one of the five game, no, four games I've covered at Nebraska that they've actually uh, won at. So, uh, always fun to see a Nebraska win, you know, as a Nebraskan. Um, yeah, I would say those are my top three. Cool. Well, nice list, Zeke. Uh, it's always good to reflect on some of that oh, stuff yeah. as another as another Nebraska football season sadly draws to a close here following. Black Friday game against Iowa. Well, that will wrap up. I actually, I do have one question for you. Oh. Um, this is both of our last games covering Nebraska for football. Yes. Um, even though I am only a junior, I will not be returning to the uh, multimedia team next year. Um, so, yeah, it's a little reminiscent. So I would say if you had one overall thought to, co- to uh, describe your tenure here covering Nebraska football, what would you, what would you say? The one word? Just like one, one brief word. thought. I can I can do it. I can do a word. A word? Do a word. Yeah, yikes. <laughs> I would say. That's um, pretty accurate. A lot <laughs> of there was some good, a lot of bad that could be categorized as yikes, and a lot of just meh that could be categorized as yikes as well. Um, you know, I am looking forward to seeing what you know, in, in Scott Frost's second chance, basically, that he's getting this spring. Uh, I'll be monitoring things. I'll be covering things in the spring spring game and all. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what the changes that are made, uh, who's brought in, and we'll continue to do this stuff and talk about that when those things oh, happen. Oh, for sure. But uh, for now, it'll be nice to take a, take a step back and just enjoy a kind of a, a stress-free, no-holds-attached game against Iowa. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, now, uh, take two, we are, that is actually all, that's all we have uh, for this episode of Husker Hot Takes. A little longer, because it's going to be one of the last episodes of the football season. Uh, for myself, Landon Wirt, this is Zeke Williams. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time.